Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of our Match 3 tutorial series. By the end of this video we're going to be able to initialize our board which is going to spawn with randomized potions. And we're also going to add in a feature that allows you to block out certain nodes from generating potions using our array layout. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we're over here in Unity and you can see that this is where we left off. If I hit play, I've got my little animations on my potions. They're all inside of potion prefabs and each of them have their potion class attached to them with the type of potion that they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these out of my scene for now. And we're gonna get started by creating a new script that is gonna be called potion board. Okay, so opening that one up, I've zoomed in this time. Apologies, I didn't in the previous part, but I will keep it zoomed in for the rest of the series. We're gonna delete our update method and we're going to make a bit of space here to add some variables. Now at a high level, we basically need to define the size of the board, define some spacing for the board. I want that to be dynamic rather than just setting a specific space amount between everything. Get a reference to our potion prefabs. We wanna create a list of our potion prefabs so that we can spawn them in randomly. Get a reference to the collection of nodes. We'll call that our potion board in this case. And then we're gonna get a reference to that as a game object as well. We'll get a reference to our layout array. This is the extra script that I had you add in. We won't worry about adding that straight away, but we'll cover that at the very end. And then I wanna have a public static version of potion board because we're gonna be referencing it from a few scripts. It's easier to just be able to call potionboard.instance rather than having to pull it into every script as we wanna use it. Starting with our public int width, we're gonna set that to six. Our public int height, we're gonna set that to eight. We're gonna create a public float that we'll call spacing x and we'll create a public float that we're gonna call spacing y. So this is just the space between. Then we'll get a reference to our potion prefab. So that's a public game object array that we're gonna call potion prefabs. Okay, now we'll get a private reference to our node. And remember, this is gonna be a node 2D array because it's gonna have the X and the Y axis of points. We'll call that potion board. We have a public game object for just the potion board. I'll call that go for the game object. Then we're going to have a public array layout. Now you won't have this array layout if you haven't downloaded the scripts that I've got in that little Google Drive download of all, all the files. So if you haven't got that, go back and get it because it will be needed, but we'll call that array layout. And then we'll just create a public static potion board that we'll call instance with a capital I. And for now, I'm gonna comment out the array layout. We'll come back to it at the very end. So with this potion board instance, let's just say void awake, and we're going to say that instance is equal to this. Then we're going to create a void initialize board. And this is pretty much where all of our logic for spawning the board is gonna be at the start of the game. So we'll call initialize board at the very beginning of our game. And now let's create our board. So in here, we're gonna need a potion board that is going to be a new set of nodes and we're creating it at the size of the width and the height that we have. So we've got our potion board, it's a 2D array, and we're passing in the width and the height for those two points. That'll create a eight by six board, which is nice, that's good. And now that we've defined the board, let's calculate the spacing of the X and Y. So we're gonna say spacing X is equal to the width minus one divided by two, and we'll throw those into brackets and we will have to cast this into a float because remember spacing x is a float and width is a int. And then just put a semicolon at the end and we'll do the same for spacing y, except spacing y is gonna be based on the height. Now the way we actually spawn our board is by going through two for loops. So if you type four and then double hit tab, it will auto fill this out for you. We're gonna start with the Y axis, then we're gonna do the X axis. And effectively the way that would work is everything's gonna start at point zero zero. It's gonna work up the full column and then it's gonna move over to the next X and work up the column and eventually it will fill out the full grid. So the first point will be the bottom left. The last point will be the top right. So we'll say Y and then I'll hit tab and that's gonna be based on the height. Enter and then we'll do another for loop. And this time it's gonna be X based on the width and hit enter. Now we need to calculate the position. So we're gonna say vector two, and this position is gonna be the position that the potion is gonna be spawned in at. 
So that'll be a new vector two, and it's gonna be spawned at x minus the spacing for x, and comma y minus this spacing for y. Then we're going to need to generate a random potion. So the way that we can do that is by getting an int random index, and that will be a random dot range between zero, because remember all of our arrays start at zero, and it's gonna be potion prefabs dot length. And so all we've done here is we're just saying, give us a random number between all of the potion prefabs that we have. So if you did add more potions, it would, it would include those in generating them. And now that we have a position and a random potion to spawn, let's spawn that potion. So I'm gonna say game object potion is equal to instantiate potion prefabs at a random index at the position that we calculated and then just give it the quaternion.identity, which is just the rotation that the prefab has. So we're spawning in a potion at a random point in our potion prefab. So give me a random potion at the position I've just calculated up here and then at the rotation that the prefab has. Now, because the potion has a potion class attached to it in here, we wanna actually set the X and Y index here so the potion knows where it sits in the board. And I realize that we created a constructor for this, but I also wanted to create a public void set indices that just allows us to set these values at any time. So I can actually just copy and paste that because it's gonna be the same method. And we'll hit save on this side and we'll jump back into our potion board here. And we're gonna say potion dot get component of the potion class, set our indices to, and then we're gonna pass in the X and the Y that we're currently at. So X, Y. And now that we've fully set up our potion, let's put it inside of the node that it belongs to. So I'm gonna say potion board at point X, Y. So the potion board node that we're currently up to, we wanna create a new node. And remember we created the constructor in the previous tutorial for this. So we are allowed to pass in an is usable and a game object of the potion. And it will basically just set is usable and the game object of the potion at that point in time. So we're gonna be passing in true because we want this to be a usable part of the board. And we're gonna give it the potion that we just spawned. Now, if I save this and we were to jump back into Unity, I can create a brand new empty object. We're gonna call that potion board. I'm gonna set it to 000. And then we're going to drag on our potion board script onto this and we're gonna do some setup. So I'll click this little uh, padlock just so it doesn't lose focus. We go back to our assets, our prefabs. I'm just gonna select all of my prefabs. So left click, shift click all the way to the end and then just drag it over this potion prefabs and drop it in. It will fill out all the elements and our potion board is the potion board that I just created there. So it's itself. Now, if I hit play here, what you'll see is we will generate ourselves a randomized potion board. So that's good. It is a little bit close together. I don't really like that, but I also think the potions are probably a little bit big. So the way that we'll handle that is just by dropping these down to 0.8 each. And if I hit play again, you'll see the potions are a little more spaced out, which is quite nice. I do also want the board to go up just a little bit here and we can just offset it by using the spacing X. So I might just throw all of this into brackets here and then just add one to it. And when that loads, it just pushes it down a bit. So we can add a little bit of a header or something in here at that point in time. Okay, so that covers spawning a randomized set of potions into our grid, which is great. The thing I wanna take a look at now is this array layout. So if you were to take a look at the private node array that we have here, Generally, when I public a variable in Unity, it will display inside of the inspector. In this case, what you'll see is that it doesn't actually display anything new. It doesn't have a header or any, any elements that, that show for it. And that's because a 2D array doesn't actually have a default display in the inspector for Unity. And it makes it a bit hard to visualize some things. And what this class effectively does is it draws that 2D array for us. So you can see here, I've now got this 2D array. And the other cool thing it allows us to do is we can tick these 2D array objects here. And what we could do with these ticks is we can define spaces we don't want to be used on the board. So I could say anything that has a tick in it, when you go to spawn a potion, check the point in this array. And if there's a tick, don't spawn the potion. And so that allows us to create these really dynamic games without having to do much real configuration or anything very different. It's, it's quite powerful. So let's implement that real quick. It's actually only a few lines of code. Basically what we have are these two classes here. So we have the array layout and we also have the cust property draw. Now the cust property draw is actually what's responsible for drawing this. The array layout just defines some data and basically creates a bool for them. 
With this, it is currently set to specifically do eight. And the reason why is because the way it draws this on the inspector is quite manual. Um, so it, it creates this 18F and then it just multiplies it out and spaces it out based on that. It's not super friendly, but playing with inspector changes in general usually aren't. But the way we're gonna interact with it is quite simple. So I won't expose you to too much of this code, but inside of our potion board, what we're gonna do is at the point that we're going to start spawning our potion, we're gonna say if array layout dot rows for the Y dot row for the X. And all that's doing is checking, is there a bool set for that specific point, the X and Y that we're looking at? And if there is, then we just want to tell the potion board, hey, at this point, I want you to make a node, but I want that not to be usable. And I want to pass in null. So I'm not going to give it a potion because obviously we only make the potion down here and only when it's needed. So at this point in time, I have a tick. I don't want to use that point of the board. And then we just have an else statement. And in that else statement, we can do the rest of the logic that we've already defined. So what that will look like when it runs is if I hit play, you can see that all these random points that I've ticked don't show on the board. And there's actually a little bit of an error that I found in here, which is that it flips the ticks to the opposite side. So I'm just gonna do a very quick fix for that. I'll update the download if you don't wanna do this yourself, but ultimately all it is is taking this new position X, making it 144, and then making it minus 18 F on the new position dot Y every time it runs. If I hit save now, what you'll see is this is flipped in the way it draws it, and that will now match the grid exactly. So the two top left and then the potions along here will all disappear as well. And we're going to be working with a full grid for the rest of the tutorial series, but by the very end of it, we'll make sure that this properly integrates with the gameplay as well. So there might be some points throughout the tutorial series where this is a bug. For now, I would just work with everything unticked and we'll work into creating these customized levels and everything later on. Okay, that's it for initializing our grid. I'll see you guys next week when we tackle basic mapping. As always, I want to give a shout out to my patrons. In the Emerald tier, we have Pat. In the Gold tier, we have Raphael. In the Silver tier, we have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, Zope, and Any Star Above. If you'd like to sign up as well, it's patreon.com slash farvane, and I'll see you guys in the next video.